Welcome to worship here at Auburn First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Patty, and today is Sunday, August 21st, 2022, and we're so glad you've joined us today. Auburn First United Methodist Church is an affirming Christian church where all are welcome and all are invited into full participation in the life of this church community. Let's continue now with the call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. With great rejoicing, we worship God. God is our refuge and our stronghold. The power and love of God flows through us. We place our whole trust in God. Let us worship the Lord. We celebrate God's presence in our lives. And now I invite you to bow with me for our opening prayer. Let us pray. O oh God of healing and reconciliation, you free us from our burdens and promise us safety and refuge. Help us to trust in your power that we may praise you and rejoice in the power of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The meditation scripture reading is taken from Psalms, chapter 71, verses 1 through 6, from the Common English Bible. I've taken refuge in you, Lord. Don't let me ever be put to shame. Deliver me and rescue me by your righteousness. Bend your ear towards me and save me. Be my rock of refuge, where I can always escape. You commanded that my life be saved because you are my rock and my fortress. My God, rescue me from the power of the wicked. Rescue me from the grip of the wrongdoer and the oppressor, because you are my hope, Lord. You, Lord, are the one I've trusted since childhood. I've depended on you from birth. You cut the cord when I came from my mother's womb. My praise is a it is always about you.
The sermon scripture reading is from Luke chapter 13, verses 10 to 17 from the Common English Bible. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. A woman was there who had been disabled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and couldn't stand up straight. When he saw her, Jesus called her to him and said, Woman, you are set free from your sickness. He placed his hands on her and she straightened up at once and praised God. The synagogue leader, in sense that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, responded, There are six days during which work is permitted. Come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath day. The Lord replied, Hypocrites, don't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from its stall and lead it out to get a drink? Then, then isn't it necessary that this woman, a daughter of Abraham, bound by Satan for 18 long years, be set free from the bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said these things, all his opponents were put to shame. But all those in the crowd rejoiced at the extraordinary things he was doing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's continue now with our Sunday message. In the book of Genesis, we read that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In six days, God brought forth light and sky, water and land, plants, animals, and humans. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. God rested on that Sabbath day. Sabbath rest is found in the Ten Commandments. The Fourth Commandment says to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God, and you shall not work on the Sabbath day. In today's reading from the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is teaching in the synagogue on this Sabbath day, and he heals a woman who's been suffering for 18 years. She stands up straight, praising God. If there's no praise from the leader of the synagogue, he says that healing is not permitted on the Sabbath. So Jesus gives us a different perspective. We move from Exodus chapter 20 to Deuteronomy chapter 5, which restates the Ten Commandments. Here, the fourth commandment includes a verse that says, Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The Sabbath helps us remember that God has set us free from slavery in Egypt. So the Sabbath includes God's care and compassion for God's suffering people. And today, Jesus is inviting us to this broader practice of the Sabbath. We'll take good care of ourselves and will take good care of others. We'll pay attention to those whose needs and concerns and abilities may be different from our own. People like the woman in the synagogue. We are called to serve with those who have varied abilities, including those with limited sight or hearing or speech, or those who perceive and process the world in a way that's different from our own perceptions and our own experience. It may be easy for us to ignore those who might not seem to be like us. And too often we have ignored the struggles faced by so many of God's children. Then this pandemic began to open our eyes to many people on the margins and the inequality and injustice they too often endure. Now, in many churches and communities, we have found new ways to join in ministry with those who are oppressed. We have found new ways to work towards justice. And one of the blessings of this pandemic 
has been our ability to find new ways to be the church. One of our greatest areas of adaptation has been our creation and expansion of online worship options. Online worship makes it possible for many who are unable to attend an in-person worship service to get connected to a local church. And thanks to new online options, more people with disabilities can get involved in a church, even if they never enter that church building. We can connect with others through assistive technologies. A church may use closed captioning in its online worship services to support those who are hearing impaired. An online worship leader might carefully describe every part of the worship service to help those with limited sight. And God's people may choose to get involved in online church classes. There are so many opportunities to grow deeper in our faith and find community, even when we are not able for any reason to travel to a church building. Of course, we can always do more. A sign language interpreter was present at a meeting I recently attended, and as many of us watched her, we were reminded that we are not doing enough to support the diverse people of God. Despite our good intentions, we're not always as inclusive and caring as we would like to think that we are. So now is the time to rethink the Sabbath. We'll continue to lovingly care for our own mind, body, and spirit. Yet Jesus is calling us to widen our circle of love just as Jesus cares for the woman in the synagogue, and just as Jesus cares for the oppressed, the forgotten, the sick, the ones who have lost hope. Jesus invites us to expand our own practice of the Sabbath, to find new and different ways to be in ministry with the people of God. And God's people will know the peaceful, healing love that God is always offering to every one of God's beloved children. In what new ways will you choose to honor the Sabbath? Please pray with me. Oh God, so often our schedules are much too busy. We know that we don't spend enough time with you and with the people whom you have created in love. So help us, God, to expand our practice of the Sabbath. Help us to widen our circle and care for your people with your love and compassion. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue now in prayer. If you have a prayer need today, you're welcome to send us a prayer request at this email address, office at auburnfirstumc.org. Auburn First UMC is all one word and first is spelled out. We are always honored to pray with you. At this time, I'd like to offer a pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we pray for the needs of the world. Guide our leaders to set aside the privilege of power, to address the concerns of those who live on the margins, and help us to care for your creation and do our part to address our global climate crisis. Today we pray for those in our community who are burdened by suffering, the sick, the grieving, those without housing, the lonely and afraid. Allow them to know your peaceful healing presence and your endless love. And now we take a moment in the silence to bring you other concerns that we hold in our hearts today.
Oh God, we now leave these prayers with you, trusting in your mighty power and your grace. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the one who taught us all how to pray when he said these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Mindful of the generosity of God and the awareness that we all have has been given, let us respond with the offering of our lives and labor. We invite you to give electronically or mail your gift to the church. You may give online on our church website, auburnfirstumc.org. Or if you're mailing your gift, our church address is listed at the top of the church website. We give thanks for your generosity. Let us pray. Loving God, inspired by the knowledge of your love, giving thanks for the gifts you offer us each day. We pray that these offerings in our lives may further your kingdom on earth. Amen. And now, disciples of Jesus, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. May you have a grace-filled week, and we look forward to seeing you right back here next Sunday. Hi, please join us for Send Me Out. Okay, are you ready, Lee? Here we go.